Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, OSA, that is Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, uh, today our topic is uh, CTEV. That is a very important topic and treated by Elizabeth. How it is treated by Elizabeth? Is it possible or not possible? And our speaker is the one and only the magnificent presenter the pioneer Elizabeth surgeon in Bangladesh, Professor Mufakarul Barisar. I would like to request Professor Mufakarul Barisar to join with us. Yes, thank you, Tanmir, for introducing me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for joining with us. Dear viewers, uh, we have uh, three academic experts with us. One of them is uh, Professor Novikov, sir, from Russia. Another one is uh, Professor Agural, sir, from India. And... Uh, the another one is uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Shamsul Huda, sir, the Joint Secretary of Asami from Patna, India. I would like to request uh, Dr. Uh, Shamsul Huda, sir, to join with us. So, welcome. Hello, and very good afternoon, Dr. Tamir, and thank you. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, uh, we have another uh, academic expert from Jordan, and uh, that is uh, Professor Dr. Rami. I'd like to request uh, the three academic experts to join with us. I hope they will join with us in the coming part of our program. Dear viewers, uh, today the topic is uh, CTEV, congenital telepathy equinovirus deformity, and that can be treated by Elizabeth. That is the main important thing. But what should be the technique, and what will be the case selection? There are lots of questions out there, but I think you will get all those answers from the presentation of uh, Professor Mofakarul Barisar. Now I'd like to request Professor Mofakarul Barisar to start his presentation. Sir, would you please share your screen? Oh. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear friends, today I'd like to talk of the correction of the club foot, which we can treat by Ilizarov. Especially, this is a very big chapter. And today I'll talk part one and part two I'll talk later on. Part one, I will talk on the neglected, relapsed, and resistant uh, club foot. I always love to show these places where I've taken my training and post-graduation. This is our institute, trauma and orthopedic center, my present working place. This is my private center where I'm, I am doing all the time Elizar with other general orthopedic surgeries. This is Kurgan 4M. I always love to show this one. And you can see here the Elizar of in children. Uh, what are the uh, club foot deformities? You must see everything before going to do any surgery, either PMR or with any external fixator or the Elizar of the patient problem. Sir, uh, we are facing some network problem. Your voice is not clear, sir. Your voice is not clear, sir. See, it is interrupting. Neglect and not possible to put all the cases in a single plate, you know. So, club foot covers congenital deformity. You know, here the sequential ways you can for last 30 years. What I've treated with the Elizar of technique only, not only the with Ponsetti, these are all cases with uh, Elizar of technique. You can see age one to 33. One you can put at the age of one, you can put in AMC that is resistant, a very difficult case. So, conservative treatment you can go, you can go for conventional surgery. You, you can do for soft tissue destruction and at the same time doing osteotomy with the destruction by Arab technique. Conventional method of treating relapsed or neglected before. In our experience of 30 years with more than 2 to 20, 55 cases, a well done Elizabeth Arab would give satisfied results from 1 to 33 years of age. After the age of three, only the soft tissue release, you can do that. It is difficult for that. 
and Elizar of Techni for club foot surgery has opened up a new era of destruction of tissues to the medial side of neglected, relapsed, or rigid club foot with or without soft tissue release has been reported to give good results. Now, this Elizar of apparatus is best suited for complex three-dimensional correction of the foot deformities, multiple joint functioning in different directions with different axes of rotation. This is very important. And with the Lizarov, you can do, you can correct all kinds of three-dimensional de deformities. If you think about the cast, that is a limited mechanical advantage, and you can use cast only the malleable bones, in malleable bones. In contrast, Elizarov method offers a more mechanically efficient method of stretching joints and soft tissues and it can configure to apply only destruction of forces to the joints. One important importance between the casting and the destruction treatment is that destruction can be modified several times. Whatever you do, you can do it. Whatever you like, you can change. But cast cannot be changed. Only one, once in a week or two, you, should, you, can, you can change the cast. And manipulation, if you go for manipulation, 35% success rate, whereas surgery, the method of treatment in about 65% of idiopathic telephase equator virus fit. Regardless of early and adequate surgery, the failure rate in the best series remains as high as 20%. When facing complex congenital foot deformities, failure is even higher. So, club foot deformity due to bony deformity associated with soft tissue contractures, you will get all the time, especially the late cases and relapsed cases. The soft tissue have contracted. What are the soft tissue? Capsule, ligaments, and musculotendinous units. When the soft tissue contractures are released by surgery, inter- and periarticular fibrosis may occur, resulting in stiffness on the foot. This is very important. That's why whenever you go for PMR, you will get relapsed cases most of the times. So our indications for Elizarov surgery, age more than one year, one year for the resistant and very difficult cases in cases of AMC cases and adolescents and adults. Relapsed, resistant and neglected club foot, arthrogryphotic foot, children treated with multiple open surgeries were done scared or infected skin from previous surgery, any deformity of the foot due to any other causes that may be congenital or shortening acquired is also treated by Elizarov method after the age of one and more. Now, if you think about the conventional surgery, soft tissue release in most cases has given excellent results in the majority of cases and is definitely indicated in uncomplicated cases of club foot club foot up to the age of one. The conventional procedures are correction of the deformities, number one, soft tissue release, tendon transfer, arthrodesis, and osteotomies. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, the, whenever we think about the Elizarov, we must know the advantage. There are lots of advantages by doing the Elizarov surgery. Minimally, you know that risk of neurovascular is very minimum and soft tissue injury, and you can control the infection also. And particularly, very good for multiple operative surgery when done. Elizar will be absolutely indicated for that. Any deformities can be corrected by this method, and residual deformity after surgery can be corrected during the post-operation period. Only one disadvantage is a greater learning curve. Limitless, infinite. If you do Elizarov, you will not be able to understand the every day what you are doing and it will give you learning and learning. That's why Elizar is always a greater steep or greater learning curve. And if you think about the Elizar treatment, we must have followed the three principles. Principles number one, which was uh, given by our professor Elizar of law of tension and stress. Slow and steady traction on the living tissue creates a stress that is metabolically activated and that gives the histogenesis, histoneogenesis, or you can say tissue genesis. Principle number two, 
shape forming processes acting upon bone tissue are dependent upon the magnitude of the applied load and the adequacy of the blood supply. Increased load is accompanied by adequate blood supply, the bone hypertrophy is according to Ohm's law. Differential destruction is very important. Both convex and concave sides are distracted differentially to correct the deformity. Now, two strategies, one for the constraint, another for the unconstrained. You can see here, uh, the strategy depends on the age of your patient, presence of body deformities, and at the same time, stiffness of the foot. Destruction, new histogenesis, as I told you, this is very important, Elizar of law. Whenever you are applying Elizar of, you must think about the law of the Elizar of. Slow and steady traction on a living tissue, I repeat it, which gives metabolically activated in both biosynthetic and proliferative ways, pathways, depending upon the functionality and functional use. And Professor Elizarov showed in 1983, when you apply Elizarov, you will get 330% blood circulation in that, where you are applying that one. Biomechanics, very important. You know that, adequate ring size, two to three, fingers, minimally unsupported length between the rings, use of olive wires, thicker wires, so greater number per ring, maximum tension to control stiffness, and crossing of the wires, it is better to apply 35 to 60, but from 10 to 90, you can go in everywhere, every place, you cannot do that. So minimally, 35 to 60 is very important. Now, application of the assembly, dear friends, you can see here in the picture, consists of two blocks, A, tibial block, consists of two rings, and you can see here, the foot block consists of calculator ring with three rods, four foot ring with this vertical rod, and the two state plate connected to the calculator ring. Whenever uh, you see this one, it will be very easy when you will enjoy in the OT with the surgeon or assist, you will be able to understand how to do that. Three ways of inserting metatarsal wires. You can see here, first method, in inserting an olive wire from medial side to first metatarsal through all metatarsal necks holding the foot flat. Second, second group, you drill the olive wire through the neck of the first metatarsal and proceed and proceed and you can, uh, as a result, you can go through the second, third, and fourth, and ultimately second, third, and fourth wires. And last one, pass two wires, one through the, should uh, capture the first and second, and ultimately fourth, fifth, and third toes, uh, metatarsals. Now, post-operative care is very important. It's very important. Whenever you do a surgery, one time you are finished. But after applying the Elizar of, you must see the apparatus, how to do the destruction. You correct the virus first. If virus is corrected, then gradually you go for destruction. You can see, you shall have to do the calculation, rule of triangle, and usually two millimeter destruction of the posterior rod. Simultaneously, the four port is pulled up one millimeter per day by the vertical rods. After the correction is achieved, the apparatus is left in place six to eight weeks in children and 10 to 12 weeks or more in adults. After removal of the apparatus, plaster cast should be given for a period of 12 weeks. This is to prevent the recurrence. Now, when uh, uh, you see that you are getting recurrence, if you correct over, do the overcorrection, you will not get the recurrence. In younger patients, there is greater growth, therefore chances of recurrence of the deformity are more. If the deformity is still, the chances of recurrence are more. If no orthosis is given after the removal of the apparatus, the foot should be splinted in ankle foot orthosis. That is, we are call, calling the AFO for a period of three to six months. And dear friends, in every surgery, there is a complications. Whenever you see the complications during destruction or after application of the Elizarov, you can correct all these complications. Pin track, this is nothing. Premature consolidation, or incomplete osteotomy when you are doing, if you see, you can go for another second time osteotomy. True contractures are common. That's why we go for 
putting the one or 1.5 kilowatts through the uh, phalanges up to the metatarsals. And sometimes when you are doing the instruction, you will get the subluxation or translation of the fragments. Now you can see the causes. You know that one congenital neglected, cerebral palsy, upper and lower motor neuron disease, spina bifida, arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. And you can see, dear friends, when you do the PMR in children, abundant tissue form leads to retracted fibrosis, which further leads to recurrence of the deformity. Why is there? I always tell this. Intelligent, first alphabet you see, you can go for lengthening, I, you can control the infection, zigzag, you can correct the deformity. This is reliable, adaptable, reliable. You have got a lot of opportunity, and of course, the versatile, you are getting the victory. So, when you are putting the Elizarov, until now, all over the world, the calcarium is fixed with the wire during Elizarov correction of the club foot, violating the Ponsidy principles, leading to inadequate correction. So, these are the uh, you know, in cadaveric, you can see here the how the ligaments get contracted in neglected cases, pronation of the foot, how we can correct, usually see, and this is the adduction and heel correction, very simple, put the hinge, two rings up, and gradually you uh, destruct. The model or a fresh cadaver, you can see how your tendoacal is contracted, other tissue contracted, you can correct, how to correct the equinus, see the two blocks ring up and calcarium and you can gradually correct and sometimes you need to go for uh, uh, tendoachylis tenotomy. And now I'd like to show you some bilateral CPB in three years old, you can see here. Then put the Lizarov, look at these. Here we have put in, in here in the toes to prevent the uh, clawing or contraction of the toes. And now, in this year, and this you can see how beautifully corrected only after three months at the age of three. So, this is arthrogravity case, AMC. Treatment was done elsewhere by PMR. You can see, rigid, and then came to me, look at the both hands and the feet and the knee contracture. Gradually, I have corrected. You can see follow up, and you can see here after full correction of the hand, feet, and this is the view of the uh, final view of the patient. He came to me with their parents from Saudi Arabia to treat this kind of difficult cases. And security of meningomyocele, when you see the meningomyocele, you will face this kind of arthrogryputing foot. You can see here, so difficult, so difficult. Look at this. If you go for surgery, then you'll face a lot of problem. That's why these are the cases. That you can in pandemic time. Last year I did this case. See, all the time you should report the wires through the uh, phalanges up to the metatarsal. And then after treatment, you can see fully corrected. As I told you, after removal of the apparatus, you must put you must put the A4. Bilateral neglected CTV, see again, treatment, after treatment, look, this is for the back side, see the sole of the foot, so beautifully corrected, all contracted structures, and this is what, now this is the normal situation, now look at this, how the patient was standing with this club foot. Next, you can see meningomyocele bilateral club foot, with a big ulcer here in the left side, in the right side. See, this is the ulcer. If you cut this one, go for PMR, you'll you'll get a lot of problem. Now, gradual, you are correcting. Whereas, and then you can see, go for put the wires here and radiographic view here. Then you go, I can see ulcer is healed, no ulcer. There was also here. Now you can see, dear friend, this is after treatment and bilateral relapse CTV with bilateral genuval. Why relapse? It was done elsewhere surgery and PMR was done relapsed and genuvalgum. 
This is the sequelae of PMR. See this car here. This is the marking of the operations. And then came to me uh, three months follow up. This is after four months follow up. I did the surgery here and here to correct the genu valgum and to correct the uh, club foot, relapsed club foot. Now we can see here before surgery how he was walking and how he's walking after surgery. Fantastic case, fantastic results with magical Elizaro. Bilateral CTV relapsed. Again, PMR, sequelae of PMR. See, it's long back. I did this one. Now you can see the back side of the foot. And this is bilateral CTB. See, see, after treatment, this is post traumatic equino virus. I have taken here only one case. You can see here, this is also CTB. So, not congenital, but post traumatic. This is, you know, treatment with the Elizabeth apparatus. Now, only the follow up after three months, you can see this is the right side past equino cavus. This is the sequelae of CP. Just you see, dear friends, 80 degree uh, past equino cavus, left side 40 degree, came to me, did with the Elizabeth surgery, and a little bit. Uh, tendo achilles uh, and five years follow up you can see from this side CTV from this to this side and uh, this is the follow up now you can see here total body AMC patient could not walk parents came to me for the last 12 years then the problems are here you can see what are the problems six major problems all the major problems you can see here how she is crawling this is the x-ray this is i have done the fissure cut is operated in the knee and this is sequential pus also done uh, this is when i was in nicho this is she, uh, she was walking crawling like that now you can see at the uh, just after the removal of the apparatus from that situation to this situation you can do something whenever it is out of your head. Look at this. Again relapsed. Three-dimensional. Very difficult case. 13 years old girl came to me. PMR done. See the bone quality of the right side. 13 years. I have not done any osteotomy here. See, after four months of follow-up, sequentially, I have corrected all the components. That is cavus, adductus equinus and virus now you can see the back side and right side just compare uh, smiling girl in standing condition this is meningomyocele again difficult case you'll face a lot of problems with sequelae of meningomyocele these are the cases see sequelae of meningomyocele look at the foot 180 degree already foot now see how uh, he was walking before doing the surgery, now this is the plaster and after removal of the plaster. Again, relapse CTB, PMR, and uh, shortening. I have done lengthening. And then uh, you can see here after treatment from left side to right side. This is before and this is after. 15 years old girl, right past equinocarbo virus. You can see here adolescent case treatment and then gradually you can correct the deformity. This is the follow up after four months. Beautiful girl, beautiful face. See five centimeters shortening with CTV. If you don't do Elizaro, yes, you can go for surgery, but lengthening you cannot do here. Whenever you Elizaro in your hand, at the same time you correct the deformity. And at the same time, you could go for lengthening. And this is the case. So after six months follow up, you can see at least test now negative. This is uh, lipo, mypo, myomeningo cell, 18 years old during treatment. Now you can see here, this is the neglected CTV at the age of 18 years. He did not uh, get any treatment anywhere. This is neglected totally. 
and then put the apparatus. Now you can see the clinical picture. Four centimeters short inning, 21 years old man with CTV and then corrected. This is of the treatment you can see left and right side. You can just compare. This is CTV right side, 27 years old adult. You can see then during treatment with the apparatus. This is just final follow up. You can see now 29 years old man again neglected CTV from the village. 29 years old, then you can correct. You can see, put the apparatus and gradually you correct the deformity and all the time try to put the uh, wires in the toes. Otherwise, you will not get the foot correction. This is after five months follow up. And this is this is already uh, published in American e Chronicon Relapse, Neglect and Regis CTB published in American Journal in uh, 30th April 2019, two years back. And now uh, I don't want to talk regarding these food osteotomies. I'll talk on different uh, lectures in food osteotomies later on. Okay. So this was today for CTV. And it is not possible to show you everything in a one uh, lecture. So CTV is a very big chapter uh, regarding the food osteotomies. I'll talk on later on. And dear friends, uh, I would like to say uh, regarding this CTEB, you can correct fantastically if you know the basic principles and basic ideas of CTEB. You can correct everything, three dimensional deformities in CTEB, you can correct. And in my conclusion, I would like to say Elizara method, the best dynamic method for correction of the relapsed, neglected, resistant club food, CTV of various ethologies, especially in the age group one to 33 years, where deformity is difficult to correct by simple procedures. <coughs> Technical and biological opportunities to achieve deformity correction goal in in traditional are you can achieve a good correction good functional and good cosmetic cosmetic results and i always love to show this one also why you are getting complications by because to the proper technique if you violate the original russian principle lack of skill meticulous intelligent follow-up lack of patience and hybridizations. So these are my all, uh, you know, Urgan fellows, my mentor, teacher, and these are director Gubin. And in our country, we're doing a lot of cases. And till today, I have 91 international publications and seven books. And see what I've shown you. I always love to show this one because this is totally related to the lizard evidence, science, and surgical skill of the surgeon. That will give you fantastic result when you do all kinds of these kinds of deformities. So thank you very much again for your kind attention and kind uh, patient hearing. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. Uh, it's a great honor for us that uh, Professor uh, Agoral sir has joined with us. Uh, sir, welcome, welcome to our show. There is Orthopedic Solution Academy, and this is the first time uh, we have you in our show, and it's a great honor for us. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Agoral sir to with you. Uh, Professor Agoral sir is the past president of Assami, and he has joined with us uh, from India uh, with a very busy schedule. Uh, Sir, I would like to uh, request uh, Professor Agwaral sir to uh, say something. And uh, if you want to present something or uh, show something to us, then it will be a great uh, pleasure for us. Uh, Professor Agwaral sir, would you please share your screen with us? Sir, please unmute, sir. Please. Yes, sir.
You can see Dr. Rajat Agarwal is also there. Uh, please unmute, sir. Agarwal, sir, please unmute. Sir, please unmute. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, sir. So uh, we can we can see your slide. Please uh, yeah, yeah, make yeah. it full screen, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is not yet full screen, sir. Would you please make it full screen? Then it will be easier for yeah. us to watch. No. <laughs> Presentation the last minute. Just a moment, please. Oh, sure, sir. It's a last minute. Presentation. It's a last minute. Last minute. Okay, sir. It's okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Full pill. Uh, make it full screen again, sir. Make it full screen again, sir. Yeah. Full screen. Full screen. Uh, slide some more, sir. Slide some more. Yeah. Come on. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, for a very, very long time, there were a lot of confusion about the how to manage the neglected club food. So, the Ponseti came and then the treatment has started of the club food. I tell you, this is the marvelous surgery, and this is the best thing which a person can add to treat the neglected club food. So before we start the club food, we should know by three angles. From the frontal plane, we should see, and the sagittal plane, and from the horizontal plane. This concept one has to make the in your mind. Otherwise, it's a very difficult to treat the clubful deformity. Because the Ponseti told that there is a pronation of the forefoot in comparison to hind foot. The kite technique, we are adding more pronation. So the concept of the change now. So this is the responsible is the plantar fascia which is causing the pronation of the forefoot. So if first of all, you take the photograph and see from the front, and another is there is an adduction of the forefoot. So one, whatever you want to do the surgery, first of all, you see how much adduction is there, how much pronation is there. Third, you take the photograph from the front view. So actually, you should know how much adduction is present there. And another thing is that you should see from the back. So most important is how much virus is there. So the things is in summarize. So there is a pronation of the forefoot. There is a virus of the forefoot. There is adduction of the forefoot. And in the last is the equino in the sagittal pain. One has to see the how much equino or equino cavus. These are the four deformities that one has to consider before starting the. We always take the photographs from various angles and we measure it how much is the deformity. We have made our own protocol that zero to two years, this is the we can correct with the positive corrective cast. Then two to five years, we have developed MICC, 
will show the case is minimum invasive cost correction and more than five years eligible based on the ponsetti principles only they accept that the atypical club there we can start after one year or two years that was told by dr badi so we are dealing here the neglected club put for, for two to five years we recommend a new technique that is called micc minimum invasive cast correction because the notorious ligaments are two plantar ligament plantar fascia so we do the first of all plantar fasciotomy then we do the serial plaster cast and in the last percuniness ta t- not be for last 20 25 years we have not opened the tendo achilles because when you open the tendo achilles paratendon is finished and after that when we have developed the we have seen that so there is no uh, there is always there is addition surrounding that so for 20 30 years we have abandoned the percutaneous by we do always percutaneous we do not open the tendo achilles because it will be your experience that after doing the open surgery of the tendo achilles if there is a recurrence you will find that there is only fibrosis that is very difficult technique phase so for example this is a 2 years to 7 month child neglected club foot if you see all the deformity adduction varus equino cavus and plantar uh, adduction is there these are pre taken photographs so first of all what we have done we got notorious ligament is the plantar fasciotomy so what we do we do the first of all as soon as the child comes to us we do under local anesthesia uh, this is a very very uh, we at the base of the calcaneus we do the percutaneous tenotomy mind you this is a very dangerous technique because the calcaneal artery is passing that area so your sharpness of the knife should always be towards the calcaneus if you have done a mistake so there will blunder there there will be the uh, damage to the plantar artery at severe bleeding to occur in the cases of the elijara foot we have find that initially it was okay and after that what happened that there was a bleeding from that so it is a very very simple technique you feel the calcaneus and feel the tendon we do the percutaneous tenotomy after that you you can see that after various plaster technique most of the deformity is corrected only there is a equinus is left there so what we have done we have just cut this is the by number 15 blade and if the child is very small we, we are using the knife cutter blade you just feel the tendon and just do the 90 degree rotation so what happened the tendon is cut there so after that you can see that the result is fantastic it's a plantar bulge flex adduction is corrected varus is corrected final pro- photographs of the plantar fasciotomy and tendo achilles tenotomy there was another boy it was a 5 year old boy who was having the very very severe club foot deformity so what we have done in the same way we have done the percutaneous stenotomy plantar fasciotomy you can see the mostly deformities are corrected and after that we have done the tendo achilles stenotomy so you the most all the deformities corrected what happens sometime the adduction deformity left there that is not corrected by the plaster so what we do we apply the frame and we correct the adduction deformity by the elijara this is another boy we were very much excited we were seen that after 6 year old child we have treated by plantar fasciotomy and ta tenotomy and after casting you can see the final photographs it is a plantar put there this is the percutaneous tenotomy plantar fasciotomy and it is the percutaneous tenotomy of the tendon achilles and this is the final photograph of the child 
now we are dealing with the with equipment correction by elixir of external fixation but based on the ponsetti principles neglected club for more than five years our going to and one another city to conduct the club put card you can see that they have shown this much is with the pmr post of media release was done there so what happens a lot of fibrosis whenever you do open surgery always there is a lot of fibrosis take place and these fibrosis are responsible for the contracture so whatever i have seen many many cases of the pmr they have been spoiled surgery resurgery mostly done but the deformity is not corrected so now we are doing the elixir of external up till now all over the world the calcaneus is fixed with the wires during the elixir of correction of clubfoot violating the ponsetti principles leading to inadequate correction so we never give a initially wire to the calcaneus most orthopedists agree that the treatment of clubfoot deformity should be non operative because surgery in the clubfoot is invariably followed by deep scarring the evident scar tissue formed after surgery leads to detracting fibrosis which further leads to recurrence of the deformity this is, thus it is advisable advisable to do the minimum surgery elixir of external fixation can be used in older children or those with very very stiff foot because the fixator is versatile and flexible in application during the construction of the pave we have applied the principle of ponsetti in elixir of fixator so our technique is frame application step by step correction of the pronation of the forefoot then metatarsal adduction and heel varus and in the last equinus is corrected so it's a very simple procedures we put two rings in the tibia and two wires in each so it's a very simple two rings and two wires another wire is in the full ring we have given that because it's a very difficult to correct the pronation of the four foot so there is no problem of the walking there Folding it right through the talus and fix with the olivar because the base is at the ponsetti treatment is the talus. So we put the one olivar and pull them and apply it through the base of metatarsal and fix with two wires because we were trying to correct the deformity without applying the folding. But it's a very very difficult because the rotation is not possible. So we have put the folding there. so we have studied the cad word there how we were knowing the where to put this question or ask so where to put the wire so we have done the fresh cad word there model the fresh cord is showing olive wire applied through the head of the talus no you can't go the neck of the talus because this is a very hard structure there so we put the one olive wire through the head of the talus and this is the one wire to the first and second metatarsal another wire is fifth fourth three metatarsal so i think it's a very very simple technique but you have to know where to put the olive wire first of all what we do the basic principle is there is a soft tissue contracture so what we do first of all we do the destruction you can see here so we every 3 4 days 5 days we do distraction so what happens the all the ligaments they become supple so when they become supple so what we do we do one whole rotation here you can see here we change our thread rods and by that way we do the pronation mind you before doing that we always do the plantar fasciotomy so what happen corrected by distraction whenever the all the deformities of the pronation has been corrected so what happened now thing is adduction so this is the hinge, hinge model here is here we do the fractional destruction there are the 2 mm 1 mm and sometimes 3 mm on the medial side lateral side 1 mm so you can see that the deformity 
whenever the deformity 50 to 60 degree is corrected, then we go to the another deformity, that equinus. So what happened? We have done the study and the model and the press schedule. You can see that these are the model there. And gradually, we have tried to correct the deformity. And what happened? What we have found, normally there was adduction of the heel there, whereas deformity. As soon as we do the correction of the uh, adduction, we make the abduction. So what happens? When we do the adduction, now question arises, why the supination? Because there is a head of the talus and navicular. Until and unless you don't do the supination, the head will not accommodate the uh, cuneicon, cubic, uh, navicular will not accommodate the head of the talus. So when we do the supination, after that we try to abduct the Fourth foot, you can see there. So what happens? We were we have done the this thing in the press model that as soon as we corrected the deformity of the adduction, make a neutral or more abduction. So what happens? The foot goes into the from various position to the neutral or sometimes valgus position. So that is most important. This question is asked how much flexion abduction usually. 30 to 40 degree because these are old children. Ponsetti said 70 degree, but in these cases, 30 to 40, 50 is only possible. That is not possible. So our basic principle is first we correct the pronation, and after that we do correction the adduction. And correction done in the last after achievement, equinus. Equinus is correction in done in the last frame configuration is changed now. Then we do the percutaneous subtendic telotomy, or usually we are doing the VY plasty. We can do the tendoaclis lengthening by rate of the one millimeter per millimeter. So this is the model of that. What we have done, the half ring, we make the full ring to the half ring. Two rings are there, and we put another ring that is the in the calcaneus. So half rings applied in the forefoot, half ring applied in the calcaneus, and equinus is corrected by distracting the one millimeter per day. So as in the bone there, we do the correction of the lengthening because here we have done the percutaneous tenotomy. And after that, the lengthening of the tendon is possible. So this is young girl, aged 17 years, with a bilateral club foot deformity. One or two surgeries were performed there. So after that, we applied the same. I think first of all, we have corrected the pronation of the forefoot. And after that, when this deformity was corrected, so we have applied another thing here. You can see there, we applied the equinus by putting the calcaneus ring there. And you know, some, some people say that Folding it difficult, we make a special sandals so that they can walk nice, nicely. You can see the pre-operative radiograph. There is about total is, is line is 180 degrees. See where equinus is there. Adduction is 60, 60 degree. So we now common problem is that what happens when we are going to correct the equinus deformity? This is the talus. It it goes always anterior subluxation. So you always make the distance of the talus by distraction 4 mm. If you have not observed that, what will happen? That the talus will come into your subluxation. So this is a very, very important thing that during the correction, your talus joint, ankle joint space should be not less than 4 mm. Otherwise, you will be in that great problem. So you can see the beautifully all the deformity has been corrected. Adduction has been corrected, equinus has been corrected. And in the last, this is the photograph of the girl. It's a how beautifully. For many years, we were doing the post orbital surgery or many other surgery. Lot of scar takes place. But why Elijara? The foot is fully, it looks to be the normal foot there. How much severe it was there. You can see the after the surgery, it has become completely normal. It's a very, very 
important case this is girl was serving by the cordial equine assemblyum so what happens is charco tarso plati of the foot and ankle ulceration of the rhodium the tibia she has gone a young girl about 18 years gone to every part of the india everybody is told that there is no answer than the amputation you can see that it is so much deformity that she is walking all the this tibia very very severe deformity a big ulceration was there it's a what is what a very very challenging case because everybody told that is a is a treatment is useless you go for amputation so what happened we have applied the frame and gradually we have corrected the deformity and gradually when the we gradually when we have corrected the deformity adduction has been corrected so what happened we have applied the frame it is a deformity <coughs> for final x-ray we have done the plantar orthotesis by putting the retrograde nail there you can see that charco joint put an ankle orthotesis because it was a unstable ankle joint so what we have done after that when we have corrected the deformity we have put the nail there <coughs> and you can see in the metatarsal there was deformity there so we have put the screw so it's a very fantastic rule it is the final photograph of the girl it was a pre operative and this is the final photograph of the complete correction you can see the girl how it will now see at present is a computer soft engineer there so elizarab gives life to many many thousands and thousands persons patient boys girls who were amputated before this treatment after that she told me that she has gone to the every part of the india everybody told that she need amputation so my request to all of you because it's a long learning curve but if you learn this technique it will be very human the problem that it is served to the humanity is a another boy 19 year old boy with the bilateral club for deformity this is a very very severe deformity you can see that even the same man the 90 degrees the adduction deformity at the both the leg 19 old boy so gradually we have corrected the deformity gradually 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 and this is the gradually deformity is corrected so what we have done we have v osteotomy because it is very severe so we have done the v osteotomy and you can see the how beautifully the foot is there and you can see that osteotomy talus and calcaneus was the put there so we have done that and you can see that here we have done the v osteotomy but usually uh, what i do i put a wedge there here because before removing the wedge it's only thing is that they the put become short but i personally found we do the eye osteotomy but per cutaneous we remove a wedge from the both the sides here you can see there so thank you very much i have written a book on the club foot that kaput is distributed even in the united states in the 44 countries so it's a very very necessary that everyone should read that book so that they should know the concept there this book was presented even sometime this book was distributed in the ponsetti center also so our period of study was 2000 to 2018 zero to tier with ponsetti case 1173 cases zero to 6 year with the micc 121 cases more than 6 year we have done the elizera of 52 cases so what is conclusion positive corrective cause is now the standard treatment of club foot 0 to 2 years for club foot in 2 to 6 year we recommend micc for neglected club foot more than 6 year we recommend elizera based on positive principle while should pass the talus not calcaneus with our series of kalbu probably the larger in india we recommend that open surgery is almost obsolete in the club foot so we do a lot of cans there of the club foot in every kyle we get a lot of children there so we have shown about the in the club foot about 4 5000 children in various part of india
thank you very much sir thank you very much sir for your amazing presentation uh, and i think uh, we have learned a lot from your excellent presentation uh, we have professor navikap sir with us uh, he has joined with us uh, sir welcome welcome to our show and i would like to request uh, professor navikap sir to uh, say something uh, regarding our topic uh, that is the ctev treated by elizaro professor navikap sir would you please sir you have to unmute yourself first we can't hear you sir no we can't hear you sir please unmute you sir have to, please unmute sir uh there is a, a mic sign uh, below and you have to click that mic sign so that you will be unmuted professor navikov sir we still we can't hear you sir professor navikov sir we can't hear you yet Yeah. You have to unmute yourself, sir. There is a mic sign. Uh, there is a sign of a figure of mic. You have to click that sign, and then you will be unmuted. dear viewers it's a, a great uh, honor for us and i think uh, uh, it's a very memorable day that we have uh, three legendary orthopedic surgeon with us in our program that is orthopedic solution academy uh, one from bangladesh the pioneer reserve surgeon professor mafakarul bari and another one is from india uh, professor agrawal sir and the uh, uh, academy person professor navikov sir from uh, russia and definitely we are very glad to have uh, dr shamsul huda sir and uh, he is the young energetic and enthusiastic reserve surgeon in the coming part of the laser of his study of a life and it's a great day for orthopedic solution academy i think uh, professor navikov sir is trying to unmute uh, himself and during that period i would like to request uh, professor mufakkarul baris sir uh, to say something as because of uh, both of you uh, present excellent presentation today so uh, during uh, this time interval i would like to request uh, professor mufakkarul baris sir to so something uh, regarding uh, the club food and the varieties of uh, treatment procedure a very yes uh, interesting thank topic you, thank yeah. you very much first of all i i like to congratulate agarwal my friend how are you fine very good fantastic lecture uh, uh, several times i have heard this lecture and again remembering everything all the time and he rightly showed everything starting from the Uh, Ponseti up to the Ilizarov, and uh, a little bit difference. I told you that I do the in case of AMC club foot at the age of one in Kurgan they are doing at the age of two. It is very difficult for AMC case club foot to correct by Ponseti technique and casting. Otherwise, I agree with him all the time that what he showed is good lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you again. thank you very much sir and now i would like to uh, request uh, dr shamsul huda sir to say something uh, what is uh, your experience uh, regarding the management of ctv by uh, elizaro uh, thank you dr tanvir i again say that i'm really glad witnessing this day that we have all three legends from different countries barish sir agrawal sir and navikov sir we are with him sir it is a pleasure for us 
we have learned a lot from them over years and now we have again learning from them by this webinar thank you sir thanks a lot sir regarding my experience with elizero in uh, club for children i uh, usually follow uh, in younger children i do positive technique casting i did older children more than i use uh, around uh, less than 5 uh, it is resistant i use just fixators and after 5 i use elizero fixators so on all the cases uh, from 5 to uh, adolescent cases also i've been using uh, elizero but just in young children around 2 uh, years 4 years uh, i have been using jess and definitely in infants we did using uh, positive technique with uh, casting and all have been doing very well that's great uh, that's great saying. yeah i uh, hope uh, you will show us uh, how we can apply the jess fixator in the coming part of our ctv program and uh, that will be a great learning for us also and we are waiting for that uh, professor navikam sir uh, can you share your uh, experience with us is it okay now would you please say something uh, professor navikam sir can you hear us would you uh, please say something so that we can clear that uh, no, still now uh, we can't hear you sir sir are you using microphone on laptop if you can unplug navikov sir if you are using a microphone on the laptop you can unplug that if you are using microphone you can unplug sir okay i think uh, my professor navikov sir is facing some sort of difficulties there and uh, finally uh, i would like to request uh, professor agrawal sir uh, to say something uh, regarding our uh, program that is orthopedic solution academy as because of uh, this is the first time we have you and uh, regarding the uh, advanced management of uh, club food by elizaro for the uh, young learners such as our team yeah professor agrawal sir yeah sir actually the main thing is the club food we were having a uh, long centuries but initially about 20 30 years back i was started my practice in 70 77 so for many years we have operated the case and we have applied the case expoil the case is there so i have gone to in 2000 to dr panseti centers so then i learned this technique so i thought why not to apply this technique to the elizera technique mind you but the main problem was that there was only one book that was written by professor ponseti but it was not very explainable so when i came from 2000 here to india so we have thought that we should write like bible like geeta because the, everybody reads there so we should make the book like this so the everybody of the world should our language our uh, principles our theme should be said we read the bible we read the quran we read the geeta so why not book on the ponseti technique so we have tried to read that and i you be assured to know the all over the world this book is the people read this book so our main aim with the dr bari and so many learned persons are there we should like that everybody we should give the teachings our knowledge share that so that what happened the everybody of the world because the main problem in the i tell you is still there a lot of gap of the elizera books so we are trying to put that so that is our for example yoga it was a uh, okay ramdev ji uh, so you yoga has developed all over the world so my theme is that all yeah so what happens that we should give the theme and we should teach 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 because still i get the patients they say sir i have been prostrated for 15 15 times 
I've been operated open surgery. Still, there is a problem. So my aim is that it's a very simple technique that you should use and correct that the Ponsetti club foot. I tell you, there is no another technique for the neglected club foot more than the, some apply the Joseph fixator, some apply simple fixators. But there is no, it's not very forceful. So my aim is that my suggestion is that that everyone use that after two, three, four years when the foot is not corrected by the past. Second thing, even in the process, early stages, lot of orthopedic surgeon from India, they have concentrated. So that is the purpose of this webinar is that the all over world, they should see how the technique, how much is the correction is that. So I'm very, very thankful that all the persons who are recognizing things, see, because I tell you, lot of club foot have been neglected and spoiled because the persons don't learn this technique. So that, and after that, that is a very, very good technique. I learned from Kabaj, I learned from Kurgan, and many other orthopedic surgeons. Then we are able to conduct that, and we can say it, even a doctor body can say it. I say 101%. If you are the perfect in that, you can imagine that girl. Everybody told that you need amputation. Not that girl. So many other fellows are there who has been documented or their life has become handicapped. Only thing that you should know the principle. So it's a very good technique. And But the only thing is, I tell you, I, India and abroad, that people don't know how to put the wires. So very, very simple technique. By this webinar, lot of people should know where to put the wire. Where to put that. Thank you very much. Thank so you very much, sir. I think uh, uh, Dr. Novisco, he has been to our hospital. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, sir. Uh, we'll go to uh, Professor Navikov, sir. Uh, sir, can you hear us? and? I uh, do uh, please say something. Oh. Professor Novikov, sir. Have... Sir, we still can't hear you, sir. We well, still can't hear you, sir. Professor Novikov, sir. I think uh, there is a, a network problem there. So it becomes a one way communication, only uh, visual communication, not verbal communication there. We are eagerly waiting for our Professor Navikov, sir. He is telling, he is listening us very nicely, and he is working. So, Professor uh, uh, Barisa, would you please, uh, would you please uh, uh, make your uh, phone in a speaker mood and uh, let Professor Nafikov sir speak on your phone so that we can hear that. That is a uh, speaker. That is uh, that is an alternative way. Yes, sir. You 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 make your phone in a speaker mood and uh, yes, take speaker the phone that, to the. Yes, speaker uh, I have only one question. Uh, when you have uh, 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 a requirement before, uh, before me, what you will do with uh, finger? Well, yeah. Usually we put so many, uh, so many vials for each finger. Vials for each finger. Did you use this technique? Yes. Uh, have you have you followed his question? Okay. We we share about this here, Governor. His question his question is why you are you are putting wires in the fingers or not in the toes? 
I showed you, I showed you, I put all the time the fingers in the, in the, in the phalanges, you know, in the toes, up to the metatarsal bone. If you don't do that, you will get contraction, all the toes. I do that. You missed my lecture. No, because yes. question is, do you put wires in the toes or not? Agarwal. Yeah, basically, uh, where to put the wire, where not to put the wire. So what we haven't find out, where the deformity is severe. You apply the plaster of uh, bands there, other things. If they are not corrected, that we assess preoperative. Otherwise, what will happen? You have corrected the deformity, but there is a flexion and adduction of the toes. So it is must that we should put the wire in each and every case. That is that is my opinion. So you are satisfied? Yeah. No, because, no, because, sir. Okay, he's okay. Now he is listening. He is listening our voice, but we cannot yes, listen sir. his voice. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Navigam, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Agrawal, sir. And thank you, Professor Bari, sir. Definitely, I would like to give thanks to uh, Dr. Shamsaruddha, sir, also for uh, being with us. And I hope we will do uh, the CTEV part two in the uh, coming Friday, as because of it's a vast uh, chapter. And we want to know many things uh, from this uh, legendary person. And we don't want to miss that thing, sir. So. And uh, dear viewers, I am Dr. Mahmoud Tantiri Ashraf. I would like to thank uh, Arash TV for helping us to arrange this type of program and definitely Renata Pharmaceuticals Limited uh, for sponsoring this program. And dear viewers, I hope uh, uh, we'll see you in the coming Friday uh, with uh, another topic like a CTV or any other topic during uh, this COVID-19 pandemic situation. Be aware and uh, keeping distance with each other and definitely wear masks. And until then, I want to say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. You are watching Raj TV. Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.